All right, good morning everyone. We are back at that local comic show. I haven't had any luck. <laughs> I've, come, I've come here for a number of months and um, each time I just, I end up leaving empty handed. So hopefully this is after Baltimore Comic Con. So I'm hoping maybe some of the dealers and vendors got some, some new inventory there. So we'll see. Uh, if I don't get anything, you won't even see this intro, but let's check out what they got. All right, so this was a successful show this time. Ended up picking up 14 books, spent about, I don't know, I think like $750 or so, somewhere in that range. So a lot of cool stuff. Got a, uh, a, a big stack here that we're gonna go over when I you know get back. So yeah, uh, great this time. I also got a little bit of footage from inside. Uh, just, it's small show, so I don't like filming a lot. So you just can kind of see what the, uh, the layout of the show is like, but. All right, let's go check out these books. All right, so we are back home. Time to go over this huge stack of books that I picked up. Like I said, I think it was like 14 books, something like that, which I believe is the most I have ever bought in terms of books at this show that I go to, this local show that I go to. Like I said in the intro, I have gone to this show and some other ones around the area that have a lot of the same vendors for the last few months. And I filmed a bunch of intros for them and then I never ended up buying anything. So I didn't get to use any of that footage or anything like that. It's still always fun to walk around the show, take a look and see what people have. But just, I ended up not picking anything up during those ones. But this time I spent a little more time going through bins. All, uh, all these books except one uh, I picked up just in bins. One of them was a, was a wall book. Uh, but in total, I spent 600 with one of the, the dealers, the vendors. I spent 95 with another and 65 with another. So a total of $760 for 14 books. I think I got some pretty cool stuff. But before we get into these, I'm going to talk about the sponsor of this video, Fanalytics. If you're a follower of my YouTube and Instagram channels, you know that having accurate and comprehensive data to make my comic buying, selling, and investing decisions is extremely important to me. Fanalytics has exciting plans for the future to provide the most accurate and up-to-date sales data as well as predictive models to help collectors make the best decisions with their hard-earned money. Keep an eye on my YouTube and Instagram channels for more announcements and dedicated content in the future. So make sure to subscribe to their Instagram for future announcements and click the link in their profile to register for beta access. The link to their Instagram is in the description of this video. All right, we are back. So let's go over these books. And it's a, I mean, there's a mix of stuff in here. I've got Bronze Age, Silver Age, Golden Age, uh, all kinds of things going on. I think even, I think this one's a copper in here too. So. A lot of things. So, first one. Start with a pretty cool Bronze Age key. This one, it's a low grade copy, but I mean, for me, the price was right. This is Amazing Spider Man number 194, first appearance of Black Cat. And you can see it's got uh, down here kind of like a chunk out of the spine. There's lots of wear and everything, but uh, it was on this was the wall book. It was on the wall for 75 bucks. I, I got it for 65. And so I feel like for the first appearance of a Black Cat, major Amazing Spider-Man key, and you know, whether this is <laughs> in this grade, it doesn't matter that it's the new stand. Uh, it's pretty much the same when you're down in this grade, but regardless, I felt like this was a, a great price, 65 bucks to pick up a major Amazing Spider-Man key. So that was the first one. Now this next one, I talk about Archie a fair amount on this channel. It's not like I've ever been a real big Archie fan or anything, but just, I don't know, I've been drawn to a lot of those books. I've ended up picking up a lot of the Silver and, and Golden Age Archie books. Uh, this is actually a Golden Age one, but it's uh, Archie's rival, Reggie. And so most people hate Reggie. <laughs> you know, he's not a, a super popular character or anything, but that's why I thought this one was pretty great because you've got uh, Betty and Veronica on the cover and Veronica punched Reggie in the face. So, you know, you don't like Reggie, so you can get him on the cover here with the two of, you know, the best Archie characters and then him getting punched in the face. It is a really, I mean, so there's a lot of uh, just wear on this bag, but it is a nice presenting copy. Unfortunately, there's a piece out of the back cover. So you can see, I mean, from the front cover, really nice presenting copy. It would probably look like a five, five, six, maybe even a six, five. But unfortunately, you got this piece out of the back and the top here. So it's maybe like a two, five or, you know, something like that, but still, you know, Reggie number uh, number five, a uh, golden age book. I think it's 1952. A few moments later. 
uh, actually 1951. So 1951, you know, Golden Age book, Archie uh, with Betty and Veronica on the cover. So I thought that was a, you know, cool one to get the opportunity to pick up because I see whether it's Archie, Archie's girls, Betty and Veronica, uh, Jughead, like all that kind of stuff. I see those books a lot, like a fair amount, like a, a good number of dealers will have those, but I do not see, you know, the Reggie ones all that often. So pick that one up. Next one, this one is a Copper Age key and felt like it was just a great price. This was Omega Men number three. Uh, didn't pay 50 bucks. A lot of these I, I did into a package deal. So you will see prices on there, but um, paid a different price than that. But uh, first appearance of Lobo. It's a solid presenting copy. I mean, it's got some wear and stuff in the spine. It's probably like an 8.5 or, you know, something like that. Maybe a 9. Yeah, first appearance of Lobo right on the cover. And, you know, felt like it was a great price for, for this book. Uh, especially because there has been some talk like that there, this character might be used in the uh, the gun universe. I don't know if that's there's any truth to that or not. But regardless... Uh, you know, I felt like it was the right price. So. Next one, and these ones I all got as part of a, let's see, I'll tell you, and I mean, it was this, this whole stack here. I got, you know, here we go. This whole stack was including that, uh, that Omega Men 3 was all part of, of one dealer's uh, pickups that I made. So I just did kind of like a big combo deal with that. All right, the next one here got Batman number 200. Neil Adams cover, I'm almost certain this is a Neil Adams cover. Uh, but these are always fun to get. You know, you get these issues that are big milestone issues, like issue 200, 300, 400. This is issue 200. It's got a bunch of the the older, like, significant Batman covers in the background there. And so I just thought this was a cool one to pick up. Batman number 200. Then got Batman number 209. And this was a really solid presenting copy. I mean, you can take a look at the uh, spine there. It's always kind of hard to see through the mylar. You know, lots of reflection and all that but yeah just uh overall felt like a a really nice copy of this book so batman 209 decided to to pick this one up this next one actually kind of a key this is the new catwoman costume this is batman number 210 and again just a, a solid presenting copy of that it's got a little bit spine wear a few spine ticks um, but overall a, a really nice presenting copy of of this, you know, kind of like minor key issue. Also a Neil Adams cover. Neil Adams did a lot of these covers in this in this era. And uh, so those are always cool to pick up. So Batman number 210. Then we're moving on to a little bit of Superman and uh, a couple uh, issues related to this. Uh, so we've got Action Comics number 293, which I believe is the first appearance. It's the, the origin of her super horse, but I believe it's the first appearance of her super horse. I can't remember for sure. Uh, but one that was in, in decent enough condition, these kind of like Silver Age, you know, it's 1962, mid Silver Age action comics are, you just, there aren't a ton of them out there. You don't run across them all that much. And this was in pretty decent condition. I mean, it's got, it's got some spine wear, um, but overall a, a pretty solid condition copy of this book. So uh, action comics number 293. And then to go along with that, I picked up Action Comics number 336, which is also <laughs> has her, her super horse on there, uh, hitting Superman in the in the stomach. And again, one that this one was actually in, I'd say, very nice condition, especially for the, you know, for the era 1966. Um, let me take a look at the uh, the general condition of this book. Was was really impressed with this one. Because I mean, usually these books are, are pretty beat up when you find them. And so seeing this one in, in this nice of a grade was, was cool to come across. Then the, uh, the last action comics that I picked up, this just felt like too good of a price to pass up. I don't even really know what the grade is on it. It says the pinup is intact, so maybe that means it's detached on the interior, but it doesn't say so. Uh, but this is action comics number 340, first appearance of the Parasite. And, you know, was in the bin for 50 bucks. And then I had, you know, a discount from buying a bunch of books together as well. So... That just felt like a, a total, total deal for uh, uh, for a first appearance, Silver Age first appearance with uh, with Superman, and um, you know one that you see actually this character pop up periodically in like the animated universe and and all of that. So felt like that was just an awesome price. So I mean yeah, not not like super high grade or anything, but still a really presentable copy of this book. I mean not any like real like detracting flaws or anything like that. Let's actually pull it out because 
usually uh, this uh, this dealer who I, I bought from a number of times, if there's like a major flaw with the book, he'll write it either on the, the back of the, the board or he'll write it on, you know, kind of like something here, like some type of label note there. So let's take a look. Yeah, like there's, I mean, there's a little staining on the back down in that corner there, but it's not like there's any big pieces missing or anything like that. I mean, for, I feel like for that price, total, total deal for that book. So I was really happy to, uh, to pick that one up too. All right, now, <laughs> because I'm putting this one away, the next stuff uh, that I picked up, I, I mean, I will be, I will be perfectly honest with, with these. I don't know how I feel about kind of like everything that we've been seeing rec or I've been seeing recently with these. I mean, they're kind, they're cool covers. Like, like I get that, but I've been seeing a lot of hype around Bronze Age horror recently. Now, me, I am a big pre-code horror fan, and for me, the big thing that I like about pre-code horror is. I mean, one, you know, it's the cool covers and, and all of that, but it's also the historical significance of it, you know, like how they really impacted comics long term, how it how it impacted the establishment of the Comics Code Authority and, and everything. So to me, that's the big thing that, that really drives the, that pre-code horror genre. Now, Bronze Age horror doesn't have that. So Bronze Age horror was just like as they started to loosen the restrictions, they would create more and more, you know, covers that, that were allowed in that time period. But some of the things that, that have gotten really popular, and I feel like it's it's with, it's largely the Bernie Wrightson and Neil Adams covers, but there's others as well. But I have been seeing a lot of talk lately about Bronze Age horror, specifically higher grade Bronze Age horror. Now, to me, it's one of those things that I would be, again, I'm, I'm being caveating this, I'd be very cautious with, because just because the census is small right now for those books does not mean that the census will remain small. Uh, I mean, somebody could have short boxes, long boxes of really well-kept Bronze Age horror and, you know, that thing that you thought like, oh, there's only two, you know, in the census above a 9-0, all of a sudden there's 50 or, or something like that. So just just be cautious with that. That's one. That's my, my caveat that I'll give with this. But as I was going through those bins, I was also, because I'm aware of, you know, I try to keep aware of what's going on in comic market and all of that. And so I was looking for Bronze Age horror that looked like it was in nicer grades for the most part. One of them I made an exception, but generally 90 plus type books. Now, the first one here is one that actually is a lower grade copy, but this one is actually kind of like a pre-code horror key. And so this is House of Secrets number 81. You can see on here, it's the uh, first appearance of Abel, who is the House of Secrets host. And this is a little bit earlier. This is actually Silver Age. So you can't really call it Bronze Age horror, but 1969. And so this one is a, is a lower grade book. I mean, it's got a lot of wear along the, along the spine. There's some, there's some creasing and, and all that kind of thing, but this is actually considered one of the the keys, you know, for the, the horror keys. Now I kind of joke about these, like if you're these kids and you see that house and you keep going towards that house, whatever happens to you, I feel like you kind of deserve whatever, whatever's coming. Like don't, don't go towards a house that looks like that. But yeah, so this one, I mean, it was $50 minus, you know, the, the package deal. So I felt like that was a, just a, a good pick up there. Now the rest of these are all pretty high grade books. First one here is a Neil Adams cover. This is Phantom Stranger number 18. And so you can see here, you know, just not really any spine wear or anything to speak of with these. And that's really what I was looking for. You know, I'm fine with things like indentations and, and all of that. Like if I see indentations and I, and I think that that can be pressed out if I'm gonna get this book graded, then I don't even worry about those types of flaws, whether it's indentations or bends or, or that kind of stuff. But I'm just looking for something that's a really, in general, high grade, clean copy. I thought this was a pretty cool cover. You know, just overall, you, you would classify it also as kind of like a good girl art type cover as well as the, you know, the, the horror cover. So Phantom Stranger number 18. Then I'll save this one for the end because I think this is like the coolest one. Uh, then I had House of Mystery number 184. I don't think this one will quite, I don't know if this one would hit a nine, uh, but it's a pretty high grade copy. And again, a Neil Adams cover, and you can see just a really clean 
copy of this book. The main flaw on this one is in this upper corner right here. There's a little kind of like ding and crease up there that I'm, I have to take a closer look at all of these, but, uh, but yeah, felt like this one was pretty nice. And so this one up, this is early Bronze Age, you know, 1970 Neil Adams cover. Then the next one, so this is the last one from this package deal. And this was, I think the most expensive one of all that I, that I picked up. And this is House of Mystery number 221. And this is a Wrightson cover. This is an awesome cover. Like, I mean, I'll just say like, and I, I actually asked to take this one out so I could check the back and everything as well. Uh, this is a really nice copy. There are some indentations on it, uh, but I'm going to get this one uh, pressed and I'll, I'll get this one graded. But I, I think that skull cover, like that is a cool skull on this one and a Wrightson cover. You've got the, the black background, which is what I always like in, in the pre-code horror stuff. And, you know, 1974, I just thought this was a really great one. And condition was, was nice. I th think I felt like it was gonna be in the nines. You know, like at least it's in the nines for this copy. And you can see, really solid presenting copy of this book. So uh, I am, I, I'm considering getting those all graded because at least with the, the Bronze Age horror, this kind of stuff, um, when you're going for high grades, really the way that you're gonna ultimately get the value out of the book is if the book is graded and you get those grades in the nine plus range. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's it's hard to get that that kind of that value out of those books. But I thought this was the this is the coolest cover out of them. The uh, Phantom Stranger 18. I, I really like this cover too. I thought this was a really cool cover. So some cool Neil Adams and uh, Wrightson covers. Now this last one here, this wasn't a, uh, a Neil Adams or a Wrightson cover. I just thought it was a pretty nice cover and it had a feel like a Wrightson cover, even though it's not. Uh, and this is Unexpected number 171. And it just, it wasn't all that expensive and it felt like I, I think I thought it could probably get a 9.0, maybe a 9.2, something like that. And so for 25 bucks, just didn't seem like that big of a risk. And so you can see, again, just really clean copy of this book. It's got a few spine ticks, um, but that's about it. And overall, just a really clean copy of this one. I mean, really sharp edges, really sharp corners. That's what I was looking for. Because, I mean, as you go through those bins, you will see a fair amount of, of these types of books, you know, Bronze Age horror type books. And so I'm really, I was looking for the ones that seemed exceptional, you know, copies, those 90 plus type copies. But that was everything. I mean, this is really, it's not the first time I bought Bronze Age Horror, but first time I actively was, was searching for it and specifically looking for, you know, kind of like high grade copies. So I, I picked up five, five of those and then was really kind of looking more in the DC bins than the, than the Marvel ones, you know, got a lot of, you know, like these few action comics, like key type books, and then just a number of the, the Batman, just kind of like cool covers, just decent condition copies of these books. So overall, it was fun. Uh, you know, got to, I bought from three different vendors, went through a lot of bins, checked out a lot of books, uh, was happy with, with being able to pick up some books again at this show. So remember to go check out the sponsor of this video, Fanalytics. They're Information is all in the details of this video. Also got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos, subscription button is right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.